um i've never done a video like this so like bear with me if it's kind of like weird and awkward like i'm still getting used to this with everything being said i just want to thank every single one of y'all who watch my videos just thank you for 5,000 subscribers you know like compared to like other youtubers who do like you know milestone videos like this 5,000 may not seem like a lot but to me that is that's a that's a huge deal because like i really only started like posting like regularly like or, like this year like i had some videos uh last summer but you know i did my videos and i didn't come back until the new year but like since january 1st 2022 you know what i mean like i've been on my stuff and i've just i've just been trying to like give y'all good content and y'all been showing me love back by getting me to 5,000 way like faster than i expected to so thank you for that With that out the way we're gonna start some q a's so i wrote down like five six questions that i usually get like all the time and the first one is how old am i or how tall am i okay Fess off. I'm not on TikTok. You know, I do Uncle Yao, Uncle Mike, Uncle whatever. But I'm not, I'm I'm not an old man. Like I, I I am 19 years old. 19. 19 years old. I'm not an old man. I'm a young guy. I'm a nice guy. Okay? I'm young guy. I'm a fly guy. I'm a cool guy. Okay, please. You can call me uncle, but I'm, I'm not really an uncle. I mean, I am an uncle. Like my brother got kids, my sister got kids, but I'm not. I'm not an. I'm not an uncle. You know. You know. <laughs> but like, yeah, like, you know, I'm a teenager, bro. I'm, I'm 19. Like, I'm just as young as y'all. Like, some of y'all even older than me. Like, some people, like, they be in my comments. They be like, oh, like, yeah, I thought you were 30. Like, like now you're pushing it. Now you're pushing it. Now you're doing too much because I do not look that old. Please. Don't, don't disrespect and to answer the other question how tall am i you know usually people assume that oh Ghanaian men they're short i'm not one of those guys i'm a tall guy i'm a big guy you know i'm six three i am six foot three and if you don't believe me look at this i told you but yeah there's that and then another question that I get is, was I born in Ghana or where am I from? So, as you know, in the majority of my videos, I like to do the Ghanaian accent. And I wasn't born in Ghana, I was actually born in America. But the way I like perfected, perfected that accent is obviously not perfect, but the way I like practice that accent was just by hearing my parents speak because both of my parents have very strong Ghanaian accents. Like if you hear my mother, like if you hear my mom open her mouth, you will know this woman is from Ghana. This woman is a Ghanaian woman. She's a Ghanaian woman. Her name is Abena. She's a Ghanaian woman. You know, I wasn't born in Ghana, but I went to Ghana twice. And the last time I went, I was four. So it's time that I go back again because it's been a long time. But unfortunately, I'm from Connecticut. Yeah. A lot of people don't know where Connecticut is. Whenever people ask me, I just say, like, I'm, I'm from, like, near New York. Like, it's right next to New York. Because what is a Connecticut? And you know what's crazy? Like, when my dad, like, came to America, he settled in L.A. L.A., Los Angeles. The city of stars. And then something clicked in his brain. He said, oh, maybe I should go to Connecticut. What? To this day, it just it just pains me that I could have been an LA boy, California, Hollywood, and, and, and you want to stay in Common Connecticut? How dare you? What is a Connecticut? But yeah, to my followers who live in the East Coast or who may live in Connecticut, you might see me. I've actually ran into a few uh, followers. I don't like to say fans because. I say fans and it makes it seem like I have a big head but I don't I don't know it just makes me feel weird saying fans so I'm gonna just say followers or supporters but like I've ran into like a few supporters and it's just like wow like there's a lot more people who follow me in my state than I really thought like I didn't realize how many like Africans and like 
Caribbean people or like just like people who watch my videos in general, I didn't realize how many lived near me until I like got to college. And it was just, it's just a weird feeling. But yeah, if you see me, don't be shy. Say hello, say hi. Just don't be weird. Cause some people are weird and then they just like take out their phones and just start recording as if I'm some celebrity. Please, <laughs> don't do that. Please do not do that. Please do not do that ever again. Please, I beg. All right, for the next question. Another question I get is, how did I get started on TikTok and who are my inspirations? So I started posting um, on TikTok around February, 2020. And like, I wasn't even doing, do you hear my mom? Oh, now you want to start making noise. Awesome. But yeah, I started posting videos around February, 2020, and I wasn't really making skits then. I was just like, really, I was actually posting like content related to like my state, like where I'm from. I wasn't really doing skits like that. And then I was doing a lot of cringy videos. Like I've deleted, I've since deleted them and I will not show you them. <laughs> like it's bad. So, you know, I was just doing trends and whatnot, just having fun. And then I had one viral video, my first viral video, which I have also deleted because it is very bad. Like, you know, my family watches in my TikToks now. So if they went and saw that, I would be in very big trouble. I'll be in that very big trouble. My first video, I got around 250K and I was like, wow, 250K views. I have to build on this. So then I started posting a lot of like African related content, like here and there. And then I started to get a lot of buzz, like a lot of like following. And then around like March 12th, March 13th, when like Corona, like got, um, when school got canceled from Corona, I had about like 5,000 followers. I was like, okay, 5,000, I have 5,000 followers. I'm at home, I'm not doing anything. Let me try and make the most of this because what do I have better to do? <laughs> like. So then, like, I've never, like, you know, I've noticed some people who, like, aspire to, like, do YouTube and, like, be, like, a social media internet star. But, like, I never really aspired to do that. Like, like, of course, like, I watched a lot of people who, like, make skits and, like, you know, I find a lot of people funny. But I never, like, sat down and was like, oh, I want to make skits. Like, I want to do this and that because, like. I always thought like, oh, it was just too much thinking, like too hard to do until I was like bored and had nothing to do. And then the ideas just started like flowing. And like, really like all my video ideas are based off like things I've experienced or like things that like I've seen with my own two eyes or like experiences that like my friends have had, which I can like, I don't know, bring to light through a skit and then that's where I started to like make my skits where like people started to really hear my voice, like really see like my, I don't know, like my personality. As I was like growing up, my favorite people to watch were always Clifford Ousu and Sam Takes Off. And like the thing about Clifford for me when I was younger, he just like, in a time where like a lot of like African kids are being like picked on for being African, he just like made it seem so like cool to be African. And like me, I never had that problem. Like I've always been like, very prideful. I've always been a very proud Ghanaian. Like, I never wanted no people to give me no nicknames, no none of that. I always told them, call me Yao Kunadu. I am Yao Kunadu. My family's from Ghana. All of that. You see the Ghanaian flag. Yeah. He made it just so cool to be African. Like, I always found him funny. Obviously, this man is hilarious. And the same thing with Sam Takes Off when he was on Vine. It's the same thing. And it's like, I took what Clifford did with like the whole like African identity. And then I took what Sam Takes Off did because when he did his whole like African dad like skit thing, he has so much vim, he has so much energy, he has so much. My mother is calling me. Hold on. Sorry about that. But, anyways, where was I? Yeah. So I took what Clifford did. I took like the whole African pride. Obviously, I've always had pride in being African. And then I took what Sam Takes Off did. Like his energy, his vim, his style, because you would like the way he like did his skits is like you will hear his voice. Like you will hear what he has to say. He's like, 
you just so like loud with it and i just like i was like yeah like that's me like those are my parents like so then I, I took the two and i took all like the experiences that i've had and like all my ideas and then i just created me like my style of skits like i really don't know like how you would describe my skits but it's like you know what y'all skit when you see one like i don't know ever since then it's just like it's just been a thing for me like just me doing my skits another question that i get from time to time is like what's my video making process so at first i used to just wake up and if i got an idea i would just start recording like there was really no organization to it like i would just like go and make improv you know what i mean and that was really before i was like any good at editing or really knew how to edit at all so like when i first started tiktok like I would be, I would like record in the TikTok app and then edit within the app and maybe like add like music later. But I like, I really made it harder than it used to be. Like I would like record like the video on the app and then I would like screen record like some music off of YouTube and then like private the video and then like add the sound. It was just a whole like complicated thing that it didn't really need to be. But then it progressed to me like, instead of doing improv to like make my videos more organized, I would like write write out a whole script. I would like keep it in my notes at first, write out a whole script, do that. And then it turned into me. In this notebook, I write down all my skits. As you can see, like I was in the middle of writing a skit, but then I decided to, you know, I have to thank my peoples. So I'll finish the skit later. But yeah, like I write down all my skits in the notebook. And then when it comes to recording, for each character, I just do every single line. So say like, say like I have a skit where it's like an African dad and y'all. I'll do all the African dad like um, lines first, and then I'll do the lines for me, and then I put it all together in this app called Splice, and then boom, bam, bow, we in business. <laughs> Over time, it became like a more like clean, like organized process. So now it's like. I'm more organized, so that means like when I'm like limited on time, because I make all my videos on Home Alone. I don't really make videos like skits when my mom is home because I'm not gonna have like the freedom. I'm not obviously going to be able to yell. I'm not gonna be able to yell the way I want to <laughs> when I make my videos. So yeah, that's why like when I'm home alone, I'm able to make like five, six, seven TikTok skits in a day, along with like two, three YouTube skits in a day. But this is the number one question that I always get. Like people always ask me this in my comments whenever I like, like post like a question thing on Instagram, anything. Whenever I go on live, this is the number one question I get. How do I convince my African parents to let me get locks, braids, or earrings? You don't, you don't. You have to take your freedom. You have to take your freedom, okay? You don't ask them. You just go and do it because if you go and do it then you will get the results but if you go and ask them they will shut you down they'll say no are you stupid or something you do not want that what happened with me is me i got lucky so i like i like started a locking process way back when like three almost four years ago but then there was a, it came a point where my mom wanted me to cut my hair so she forced me to do it i had to chop my hair and then, so then I was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. I want locks. Like, I want long hair. So then, this was like July 2019. So, my hair started growing bit by bit by bit. I think I might even do like a hair journey process on here if y'all want it. Let me know if y'all want it. Let me know in the comments if y'all want that. But yeah. So, July 2019, I cut my hair. And then, I, it was growing bit by bit by bit. And then, come 2020... I had like a big afro in like January 2020. So then I was like, okay, what do I do with this? Because if I ask my mom to take me somewhere for them to come and like lock my hair, she's obviously gonna shut me down. So I was like, okay, let me take this into my own hands. So what I did is that I sponged my hair, you know what I'm saying? Got it all twisted and then Corona happened. So then there was no barbers. So then I had the freedom to grow my hair. So then by the time like school reopened, like I had locks that were like down to here, like, and I hadn't got them retwisted yet. And then they just got to a point 
where they had to get retwisted. Why are you making noise like that? You, can't you say I'm trying to make a video for my people's? Nonsense. My hair got to a point where it had to be retwisted. So then, you know what I'm saying? Last year, around like April, got it retwisted. I actually asked my mom. I was like, mom, I'm begging you. No, no, no. I'm telling you. Okay, I didn't say that. I was like, mom, I'm begging you. Like, can you please let me go get my hair like done? And then she agreed. And ever since then, just been getting my hair done. Obviously, I pay for it now because, like, she's gonna complain. And then when it came to my earrings, when I got to college, um, like I've always wanted earrings. Like I've been chatting, chatting, talking about, oh, I'm gonna get earrings, I'm gonna get earrings. And then the opportunity arrives because my dorm hall is right across from a tattoo and piercing place. So I was like, okay, I have the money, I have the resources. I'm just scared. And then one day I woke up, I was like, me, I don't fear anything. I don't fear anything. So I made an appointment, got it done for $60. And then I kept it hidden from my mom for a cool, like, if they make noise like that one more time, I will. So I kept my earrings hidden for like two months. You know what I'm saying? Everything cool, everything nice. And then I got caught lacking. And then my mom caught like my earrings. And then the first question she asked me, she said, yeah, are you gay? Do you like men? I said, excuse me? Me? And obviously, I don't have anything against gay people, okay? It's Pride Month. I have gay friends. I love you people. LGBTQ+, plus, all the letters. I love you people. But like, I was like, ma, how does earrings make you gay? That doesn't make any sense. Because Michael Jordan, he has earrings. Is he a gay? No, he's Michael Jordan. He has women. Plenty of women. Moral of the story is, you don't convince them. You just go and do it. You don't convince them, right? You don't ask them. You go and do it, and then you ask for forgiveness. Because if you go and, if you're trying to ask them and ask them and ask them, you're going to get the same answer every time. But, like, they don't really care if you have them. Like, that's the thing that I learned. They don't really care. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Because if it was that big of a deal, then you would get your ass beat. Like, <laughs> let's be real. Like, African parents, they don't play. They don't really care. They just care about the reaction of others. They just care, like, about the reputation that they would have. But other than that, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, just go get it done. And then worry about the consequences after. Because it won't last that long and then you'll be fine like you'll be chill just take your freedom because if you don't take it then you're gonna be miserable but yeah that's it for today's video make sure you like share comment subscribe turn on post notifications because this channel is on the come up like you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss the rise of this channel i want y'all to be a part of it like make sure you share with your friends your family your mother and your father your auntie your uncle your grandmother your grandfather all of them your girlfriend your boyfriend your whatever friends Share, share it with them you know yeah but uh yeah that's it for the video and i'll see y'all next time peace